Hello everyone. At the time I installed my AC Infinity HVAC duct booster, I was very new at recording and editing videos for online streaming. That video got a lot of comments and some of those were courteous and helpful in regard to the production values of that early video. There were also tons of comments on the project itself, some of which I would like to speak about. So I've edited the original footage to streamline some things, and I included some new narration to help clarify things. So let's get into it. One of the popular comments had to do with the need for sealing the duct joints and insulating the ducts. I tend to agree those would be good to do, but that isn't the root cause of the problem I'm dealing with, so it's irrelevant to the subject matter of this video. The root cause of the airflow problem in this system is improper duct design and installation. It was like this when we bought the house 26 years after the fact. Another frequently discussed question was, does this duct booster pull air from other rooms? Some of the commenters theorize that this booster will take, rob, pirate, or steal air from the other ducts. I didn't add a new duct to this system. The fact that the faulty duct has always been there and has always been shorted on airflow can't be ignored. This problem resulted from a duct run that was poorly designed in the first place. It flowed almost no air while the other ducts didn't have this problem. Adding the booster created airflow balance in the system. By providing the faulty duct with the corrected airflow allotment, the system was designed to provide. Rather than pirating air, I say it's Robin Hooding air. It draws no more air from the system than would have been delivered had the original installation been done correctly in the first place. Let's move on to the installation video. I'm looking at the airflow coming from the HVAC register in my son's bedroom. As you can see, there isn't enough air to actually cool the room. The damper and register are opened all the way. I've tried adjusting duct dampers throughout the house, but that doesn't make enough difference. The duct is near the end of the main plenum. About as far from the furnace blower as it can get in our house. I put some arrows on it to indicate the direction of the flow. And then it has a drop in it, there, all the way by the back of the house. Then all the way in the far corner it goes up, all the way up to the second floor where it enters the bedroom. Well, it has really wimpy performance. It gets almost no airflow in that room. So I decided to add an inline booster to that HVAC duct. So I added a booster right here where that duct joint marked with an X is. I pulled that section of duct pipe out and shortened it so I could fit the new booster in line there. I already took several screws out here, sheet metal screws. I have to work these apart. This is the airflow booster I installed. Surprisingly, it fit right inside the 6-inch duct. There's a fan inside the housing that's used to boost the airflow. It's proven itself to be very effective. I've learned it's more than enough to increase the cooling on the second floor. I keep it set to around its 35% speed. 
That's all it takes for the room to get just enough cool air to do the job, and no more. That way it doesn't take any air the other rooms are supposed to get. The entire house is now cooling just fine. I got it off Amazon, it has good reviews, and AC Infinity is based in California. Having decades of industrial automation and controls experience, I'm satisfied with the product quality. My only qualm is that it isn't UL listed or ETL. However, it does bear the CE mark. CE is a European quality mark that indicates it complies with all their applicable regulations. So I'm thinking for my purposes here, this is a good indicator. The AC Infinity Duct Booster is designed to be used in existing HVAC systems. It has a dual ball bearing induction motor with a 67,000 hour rating. That's roughly seven and a half years of full time running. But it probably won't be running more than 50% of the time. So I'm guesstimating it should last 15 years. We'll see. It comes with a combination on off switch with a speed control knob. I find it works extremely well. It's very smooth and quiet in our application. I was surprised to find that both ends of the booster fit inside the 6 inch duct. Someone even suggested putting the unit inside the pipe without cutting it to fit between sections. That's actually a great idea, but it was too late to help me. The duct booster seems to be designed for the European market and it's 15 centimeters in diameter. 15 centimeters is 5.9 inches so it's smaller than the expected 6 inch diameter. That explains why it doesn't fit the 6 inch duct the way I was assuming it would. And it appears AC Infinity actually matched it to their 6 inch flexible ducting. Here's an example of how their flex duct can be used. And there's a link in the description if you're interested in more details. The crimped end of the duct didn't fit into the duct booster. I was actually surprised to find that both ends of the duct booster fit loosely inside the uncrimped end of the pipe. It turned out the booster diameter is only 5.9 inches. So that's how I went ahead and installed it, both ends inside the pipe. It works fine this way. It's too far. I don't want to go that far because it'll cut this wire eventually. For safety's sake, I ended up giving the cord a half inch clearance from the end of the pipe. Do this. I didn't want it to overlap the nameplate which sticks out a bit. Placing it so the end of the pipe is right at the edge of the nameplate works fine. I marked one end of the booster housing to clear the power cord by a half inch and the other end two and a quarter inches from the end. Then, corresponding to the space between those two marks, I removed 3 and 5 eighths inches from the end of the pipe. To get an even cut, I measured 3 and 5 eighths from the end and put tick marks every 2 inches around the pipe. Just going to join these marks 
uh, with a piece of tape. That's pretty good. That way I can just follow the edge of the tape when I cut. I first saw it across the seam in the end of the pipe. Then I split the seam open. That gives access to make a smooth cut with some tin snips. I used my 50 year old aviation snips. Self-drilling screws won't work well on this booster housing. It isn't just ordinary tin. Besides, pre-drilling is always better. If you're wondering, I used Flex Fix tape I got from the big box store. This tape is listed and it holds fast and sticks tightly on the metal duct. The product cut sheet indicates this tape is suitable for metal ducts, so it's a good option. And I was just using what I happened to have left over from a previous job. This is the flow direction on the blower unit itself. The airflow booster.
a bit. Push, 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 push. Slightly like twist and push. And it's still the top. Alright, push. Oh, nice. We're watching the duck booster speed setting being adjusted and the resulting changes in airflow volume. The camera picks up the furnace background hum. That isn't the duck booster sound. The booster's not even running. And you normally don't hear that hum when you're in the room. The furnace just started blowing. Our duck booster always stays set at around 35% speed. The sound level is fine for us. I've posted a video about using a temperature controller to turn the duck booster on and off. That was my quickest and easiest way to automate it. But it isn't the only way, and I've upgraded it since then. Sometime later, I converted it to use a control relay that switched by the furnace. I've uploaded videos about that as well. More recently, I uploaded an updated video about the relay control system. There's a lot of helpful information available there. Thank you for watching. Please take a moment to like and subscribe.